Right, hi everybody. In this video, uh, we are going to bath Neo's feathers only. Um, and I can show you a few little tips um, that can help you bath them easier and quicker. So, um, I've got everything ready. So it's best to get all your things ready and I'll show you what I'm using and how I'm doing things. And then last thing, we'll get the dog in. I've got an on-sleep mat in there for him, and as you can see, it's just an ordinary bathroom. Um, I haven't got my grooming studio ready yet, so we've just been doing it here, but he's well used to that. Um, and you can use a, a restrained um, to bath them, and you can hook it over your taps to stop the dog jumping out, if they would. Um, he doesn't, he's quite good, so there he is. He's already going in, good boy. So you're going to have a bath, baby. And I'm not going to bath his back. He's been done three weeks ago, but his feathers are really matted now, so we really need to do them. Uh, so I'm going to leave his back and his sides, and it's just going to be his feathers, which I'm going to shampoo and also apply a really good conditioner to help me demat him. Now, I use measuring jugs to mix up my shampoos I, uh, and conditioners as well. Uh, I always, always dilute them, um, whether human or dog one. When you buy a dog one, um, it tells you how to dilute them, how much. You can do more or less. Um, so if you need to bath a dog twice, which usually they need a twice wash uh, if they're really dirty. Um, and you can dilute it more or less depending. Second coat of shampoo, I tend to dilute uh, more uh, because it's not, the coat isn't as dirty anymore. Now, if you've been applying oils or um, any silicone-based shampoo, I always put a little squirt of washing up liquid into my shampoo mix for the first lot because that will degrease really well if you use an oily product to demat them or to keep them oiled up a little bit um, to help you uh, the matting in between the baths. But this will also um, strip out any silicon that's been in the products. Now, um, some don't like to use silicon products. I totally understand that. And But without silicon, really, to make the hair shaft nice silky and smooth and dematted well you do need some silicone there's a lot of information on silicones used in hair products um, and you can have a look read about it see which ones you want to stay away from generally um, if you look at the, your ingredients list um, if they are really at the bottom of your ingredient list that means there's a lot less silicone if they right up the top among the top three ingredients, then you're gonna know that there's probably quite a lot of silicon, which it's not a problem. Um, the only trouble with silicon is that it builds up, it coats the hair shaft, which makes it nice and silky smooth, and that's why you can demat it really easily, and it gives you the shine, and it, it does actually protect the hair from the environment and the breakage and everything, so silicon's not as bad as you think, but you do need to regularly wash it out to prevent it from building up on your hair, because if it builds up, builds up, builds up, and you are not breaking it down with either um, washing up liquid, which is the best one to break it down with, or any sulfur-based shampoo, which almost all of them have sulfur anyway, um, then you're not gonna get in trouble. I've used uh, human conditioners, and which almost all of them have silicon, uh, for a good 10 years now, and I have never seen the hair break. Um, if you're careful with how you do it, you will not break, and his code is not damaged by silicon product at all. My latest product that I've just found is this LV Power Mask for Restore, and that is silicon free, completely silicon free. I've never used it on him, I've only tried it on my poodle and me. Uh, and it's been actually really good. I was quite impressed with it. So not sure if we're going to use it today We'll see which one we use today, but my also another favorite one is L'Oreal L with dream lengths besides that it smells absolutely divine and you're not going to want to stop smelling and touching your dog um, it is fabulous for 
getting the coat nice and silky smooth and shiny and dematted really well. And this one does have a little bit of silicone right at the bottom of the list, so that one's not too bad at all. Uh, it hasn't got huge amounts of silicone in it. Um, and um, we are, so we'll see which one we use. So I'll mix up my shampoos first. Um, I use any, I don't have a favorite shampoo. This one's a protein shampoo by Designer Dog. Um, I've tried lots of different ones. I um, um, can't really see. If I was getting him ready for show, I would probably use the L'Oreal Dream Length or a Pantone Sleek and Smooth Shampoo, that sort of thing. Um, I would do a first lot with an ordinary dog shampoo and a fairy liquid washing up liquid to strip out the dirt. And then second lot, I would put in a much nicer conditioner, but he's not going to any shows. Um, so we're just going to do a dog shampoo with a fairy liquid and then we're going to condition it properly. And uh, I usually don't measure up, I'll just, I know by eye how much shampoo I want, a bit of liquid. And so we've got a bit of shampoo there and um, we'll do a little squirt of washing up liquid. And now we're going to mix it up, make sure the water temperature is nice. I've noticed that boys really don't like very warm water, especially around their testicles. Um, so if your dog fidgets in the bath too much, when you're doing the back end, check your water temperature because it might be the reason why they don't like it, um, which I found out with him. It took me a while to realize, but um, when I turned down the water temperature, he stopped fidgeting. Um, now, dogs normally don't need the water as hot um, as we wash our human hair with. So I sort of filled it up. Um, and another thing I use is a little squirt bottle, uh, which um, I put my mixture in and it's best to apply it with a little, little squirty bottle. Um, you can buy shampoo mixing bottles online in your um, dog grooming supply stores or you can just this is a water bottle uh, or you can just use any plastic bottle washed out well and you can put your mixture in there now I've got shampoo mixed up here already and another trick I've learned from poodle grooming is that I don't have to wet the dog because my shampoo is diluted so well I don't need to wet him first if he was straight after a muddy walk in the bath and he's still wet and full of grit and mud, then I would just quickly rinse out the mud from his legs. Uh, but at the moment he's clean and totally dry. So I'm gonna start squirting and you'll see he foams up really nicely. Uh, yeah, turn around. So we're just doing his feathers and I'm just gonna squirt straight into his coat. And then you'll see, you'll get a nice foam. you up close then so that you can see how well it's foaming and there was absolutely no need to rinse him first. Mistake now. Nah. Stay. Let's scrub his hogs. Now because his hair is short there on his hog I can really scrub it well but I'm not going to uh, scrub it that harshly on his long feathers because, I, right, Neo, no, stop that, please. Uh, because I don't want to tangle up his feathers. Um, so I squirt it all over this side, and we're just going to. I'll just nicely run my hands through like this. Uh, I'm not scruffing it all up and tangling it up more, and I'm really working that shampoo into the coat all the way from the skin uh, so not just the ends but you really want to get to the roots as well with the shampoo and I'm just working it in nicely with this, these feathers um, I feel some twigs in there as well so if you can get them out now gently get them out if you can't get them out wait with the twigs or anything stuck in the feathers 
and you can get them out when you, we've got the conditioner in because they will come out easier. Stay. Stay. And we just and we've got really nice foam as you can see on a dry dog. Oopsie. And a really dirty one. He's very dirty. Right, stay there. You can do that is last because if they hang their head out the bath, um, all the water from their ears will drip all over your floor. So, but I'm going to leave his ears um, today, uh, probably. Uh, no, I'm going to do that one. Just a neo turn, turn, neo turn. Now I'll have him turn to do the other side. Uh, stay there. I will refill my squirt bottle. Oopsie. Stay. With my shampoo and mixture. And right, facing nicely. And I'm just going from his feathers down. feel mine a bit more often because my hands are too small and uh, when the bottle gets slippery um, when it's wet and shampoo's got all over it so I prefer my smaller bottles and we just uh, running it down his feathers and we're going to do his tail as well because he's had uh, and uh, boy now stay there you can let the shampoo sit in there for a couple of minutes just to soak everything off. Stay. I'll just show you up close really how dirty he really was. Good boy. Stay. So you can see the, the water's really filthy, brown foam. Uh, but he's foamed up quite well. And to stay. Stay. Um, and we're going to rinse him now. And then we'll do a... Stay. Again, make sure your water's not as hot as you would normally use it. Dogs like to do a little bit cooler, but you don't want to use cold water because that's just not going to wash your coat at all. So you want it nice and warm, but not too hot. Stay. I'll start rinsing the side. Turn. Turn. Good boy. It's good to turn him because reaching over the other side can be difficult. Um, or you might not be able to reach very well. So teaching them to turn in the bath for you is a really good trick. Now my water's warm enough. And we'll just rinse quickly. Again, I'm just letting the hair dry, drop nicely as I'm rinsing. Um, I'm not squidging it all out. So you might not see now, but when we move to the Stay, stay, stay. 
good boy. So, and there we go. And we'll just rinse there because I want to do some stripping later or tomorrow. Uh, on him, so I'm not going to bath his coat on the top there. I'm just letting the water run nice and the shampoo run down and uh, really you have to rinse the shampoo properly I see so often that people don't rinse it out well enough and shampoo is not designed to stay in the coat never so if you leave residue of shampoo in the coat it could really dry out the hair and the skin so it's really, really important to rinse it until your water runs clear. Because I'm gonna shampoo him again and rinse out then, um, uh, it doesn't have to be totally, totally, but most of it I want to rinse out now. My water pressure is really low, so it does take a while. Um, so I will probably pause for the rest of the rinsing. Um, on his other side and then we'll come back um, and I will shampoo him again same way as we did uh, but this time I'm not going to put washing up liquid in there anymore it's just going to be shampoo and then when we'll come back I will uh, tell you a bit more about conditioning and the rest um, of today's bath so I'll be back shortly hi guys we're back here now he's had his two lots of shampoo and he's been really well rinsed out and now we're going to condition so I'm going to try my new L'Oreal mask um, and what I'll do I've got a little measuring jug and I'm going to put a good dollop in there um, so um, now I'll rinse my hand into the jug underneath it so I get it all in there. And now I'll just put a little bit of water. Uh, and then this is very fabulously a um, tool, this whisker, um, to really mix it well because conditioner doesn't mix as well. You really need to stir it well. And this one will really, really uh, Mix your conditioner well. So I've got it all nicely, but it's a little bit too thick. So I'll just edit some more water. I like my conditioner quite liquidy and it's uh, nice and easy to apply. For a heavy mat, I can just put some extra undiluted in, see, um, to get them out and uh, but it really saves you a hell of a lot of rinsing um, because also and then I have got a small uh, squirty bottle which is they are sauce bottles from Amazon uh, really cheap I've got a little one for conditioner and then I'll just put my mixture in there Stay stamps. Right. And I've got it in there. And it's again mixed with warm water. Whatever consistency you need or how much condition you need. If you haven't got a really long coat um, or matted coat, then you can dilute it more and apply really as little conditioner as you need. 
Um, so there's just no meat but in loads of conditioner in you'll end up rinsing it forever um, and uh, especially or if your dog's got really good cold just make a really mild mixture just a little bit because it's always nicer to condition the coat and we'll just start applying basically exactly the same way as we did with the shampoo uh, bottle and I'm just going to put this only on his feathers um, only on his long hair um, so we're just going to go I did end up laughing his ears because I had some leftover shampoo so we'll put some in his ears Now this product being silicon free, I don't know how well it's going to work on the mats. into the coat as well as you can. It's got a twig there and they will come out easier in the conditioner. some L leaf um, links into his heavy knots undiluted um, and see what I can work through with my hands it's just the armpits really and at the back 
off his back legs because that's where he's got the heaviest mats. So there's just undiluted LV goes right into the mats and he's got them back here. These are really tough. It will take a while to rinse it out, but uh, it'll hopefully save me. some hair and again I'm not scruffing the hair too much I'm just working it down the length and put it in nicely get it in and that will this um, these conditioners really help the blaster ease the mats away from the skin and a lot of them uh, and the dryer and a lot of them might even come out so, and we're going to rinse him out really, really well. That's another important thing uh, with conditioners. Um, and uh, I will pause here and then we'll come back to when he's been rinsed out and we'll um, do some, I'll show you some more. Hi everybody, so we're just back here now and uh, rin we rinsed out his conditioner really well. Um, and that also uh, helped me see where exactly he's matted really badly and he's quite bad at the moment. His coat isn't doing great. Uh, there's far too much hair um, that is coming out of him, which is not great. Um, so, and that just shows that if he's heavily matted, that means he's losing um, a lot of hair. And we've been trying to fix this coat for the last two years and nothing ever works within long term. But anyway, we've got to deal with what we've got. So I know he's heavily matted still in there. And uh, so now what we're going to do is just squeeze the water out. We can hold his feathers and just gently squeeze, but I'm not rubbing. And also let it squeeze there, get the excess water out and on his legs like this. Get a squeeze right near turn. Let a squeeze. Good boy. Almost done. You're a pretty boy now. And he's going to want his treat after a bath. Wait, and now this is a good time to wipe the bees out as well. Just a little cotton wool. I like to damp it a little bit. Um, we'll just give his, his, oh, they mucky, see, they need doing, oh dear stumps, quite mucky ears, wait, because you need more, <laughs> don't shake yet, not yet, or you can use a little bit of toilet roll, or you can also use some baby wipes to wipe the ease out. And I try when I bath them, I always try not to get too much water into the vis. It's not going to harm them. I've got dogs that um, dive under the water um, and they've never had ear problems. So the water's only not good if your dog's got problems with their ears. But a healthy ear will be clean. Um, without too much muck. You have got mucky ears, my boy. We lifted a bit too long, didn't we? Is done, stay. Now, with the towel, uh, normally if you bath the dog on a short coat, you can give it a good rub like this, but we don't ever rub uh, this way the long feathers. Um, so, with his ears, we'll just run the 
gently the hands over his ears and just squeeze the, just let the towel absorb your water. I do some of my wiping in the bath still, the most of it. I'll show you on this side, hopefully you can see. So I'll just hold the hair and I'll just gently run my towel across, over, stay, look that way. And I, that's all I'm doing. So I'm not gonna go rub him like this to dry him. On the short hair, I can, like here on his thigh, that's fine. Um, and his tail again, just gently run it down and and his hock, I can give it a good run because that never mats, does it stump? Um, wait, and we'll just absorb some of the water with the towel. Right, now turn that way. Stay. Stay, my boy. And so we'll just absorb with the towel. We don't do no rubbing. No vigor is rubbing on the long hairs, especially if it's still, ah, uh, uh, not yet. So we'll just gently go like this. And uh, I'll show you a little bit of drying next as well. Stay, wait a minute, wait. And he's all done, so he can come out. Good boy. You go. So thank you for watching and we'll be back with uh, some drying.